Hey, everybody. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Gosh, it's been a while. How many? September 28th was the last live stream. How is everybody doing today? Make sure you grab a donut, get a seat, relax. We're going to go over two videos today. We have a, a different kind of setup now. You guys can hear me. You guys know how it goes. Like, how's the audio? Everything working fine? I haven't been here for a while, so we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. How you doing, Faridin? Hopefully you're not in any of these videos. We've seen you before, but uh, it's been a while, so... How you doing? Netwatch, Grumpy Frog, how you doing? It's been a while, yes. Death Corpse, how you doing? <laughs> no, you're not in any of these videos. Happy New Year's, Edwin. Wow, you guys know how it goes. You know, 100 likes, we'll get started. 100 likes, we'll get started. So we got 80 of you in here. How you doing, Harry? It's been a... Yeah, guys, it's been a while. So uh, I'll give you guys some updates here and there, you know. So um, maybe we'll be able to share some stuff a little bit later today. But we're going to get some people into class. But uh, yeah, uh, so at September, end of September, I wanted to take a three-month break. And I did. I took a three-month break. Uh, somebody mentioned that my next, my my uh, other live stream would have been October. I was going to do that. I was going to do like once a month. But you know what? I just decided I'll just do some shipping fulfillment. I'll just kind of do some stuff. I'll have some fun. And um, in October, I went to Vegas, met Dr. Disrespect, and uh, watched uh, Snapshot 7 for his company and Midnight Society. Had a great time there. And then uh, I decided to go to Del Mar Dog Beach. Had some fun with my doggo. And uh, just kind of traveled a little bit and focused on some mental health, some physical health, some spiritual health, did all that stuff. Uh, started writing a little bit more. So I actually got some cool stuff. I'm working on a, a finalizing a book right now. So we're going to work on that. Uh, it's it's going to take it's going to take the year. I'm going to give myself the year the rest of this year. But um, yeah, in the November, did the Spartan Trifecta Weekend. Have you guys ever done Spartan Trifectas or done Spartan races? This is probably my 15th to 20th Spartan race. I did three of them in that weekend. But I did all three. And uh, man, that was a lot of fun. Good challenge, good physical challenge. And then, yeah, December. December, what did I do? What did I do in December? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for New Year's, I went to Sedona. It's Tom Segura. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Tom Segura, guys. I'm not Tom Segura. You know how it goes. We got some music. There we go. Let's get some music. Uh, yeah, it was cold up in Sedona. It was it was real cold, but I had a good time. I had a good time. A lot of fun. Uh, the Spartan race was a lot of fun. But yeah, this year. We're getting back into it. Uh, we have the basic smart writer course on the the academy. That's that was finalized last year, and I'm working on the second one. So, uh, what what the book's about? The book's gonna be about. Let me go ahead and put this somewhere. Let me put that. Oh, I'll put it right there. The book is going to be. Oh yeah, I don't want to try Idaho. Screw that. The book's gonna be a, a strategy guide, basically on how to ride. Uh, I've been really working on learning the hero's journey. And uh, a lot of uh, fictional stories and how things progress. Because I, for me, like learning something, I th there has to be a why. There has to be a, like a character arc. And obviously, with learning something, you're starting off with nothing and then ending with something. It's kind of like a story. So I've been learning a lot about that. And so the book's gonna. Long story short, the book's gonna be how how to ride a motorcycle, um, using the MTC Rider Academy and. And all the stuff that we've created here, the plan method, MTC awareness stages, all the different things to point out, you know, uh, open lane pattern. Um, speaking of which, I got to get the pen out, make sure you guys aren't chewing on the, the markers. And, uh, you know, rescue, the teaching and mentoring. Basically, it's a smart writer principle and how to do that. Uh, I came up with a, a whole new uh, checklist for a pre-ride check. I've come up with a whole new way of doing a group ride uh, situation where it's more modular. I got to put it into practice and see how that goes. But the whole book's going to be uh, about that. Uh, it's going to be coinciding with the uh, MTC Awareness, or not MTC Awareness, MTC Rider Academy. And yeah, uh, after I'm trying to bring in After the Ride, Ride Along with Dan and the Fireman, all that stuff. And so it's going to be like a multimedia project. 
So it, like while I, I'm writing, I have like the baseline of things. It's like, okay, now I got to create the film plan. It's got to tie in with the writing. And then if it's going to be printed, how am I going to get this one? We're going to use QR codes. To do, so it's, it's uh, the drills, same thing. Um, there's like 20 plus drills. I'm going to try to knock it down to 10, uh, 10 of the most popular ones. And I've created a whole gaming system around it. It's based off of Moto Jim Kano and barrel racing. So it's like, and we're, we're increasing the size of the drill setup. So right now it's 40 by 60. So I'm doing 80 by 120. I'm going to start there. I'm going to practice that out. And so hopefully we're going to have a, a tournament and uh, so maybe some prizes this year. Who, who knows? This is very first steps. I have big ideas, but I uh, can't wait to do it all and work on that. Yeah, Rexford, I I got a lot of the ideas originally from, uh, you know, back in the day I'd play a lot. You know, I don't play now, but I'd play a lot of video games and, and strategy guides. You know, remember anybody remember Brady games, strategy guides? Like, you could almost read that whole, like a whole strategy guide and understand what the game's happening. This was before YouTube and all that stuff. And I was always uh, the the kid that had the, the magazine tips and tricks. And I would help my friends out when they would play the video games. And so, like, I, I based a lot of it with the book I want to write on strategy guides. And... The goal is to like you know have a tutorial on how to like go from the beginning to the end. There's a story involved. Obviously, the game has the story, but there's no real story when it comes to riding a motorcycle. So I'm creating one, and uh, you know the the students' progress and the students. Um, I'm forgetting the word now. It's the first day back, guys. Relax. Uh, the students' journey. There you go. That's easy to wait. Easy way to put it. And so, like, I'm I'm creating that, working through that, and uh, it's all gonna be like strategized. So it's gonna be like good graphics. There's gonna be cool um, uh, pictures. There's gonna be some concept art here and there that I'm working. I'm working on some ideas, but it's a tutorial for the most part. And then for the video lesson, because you know you're playing the video game while you're also reading the strategy guide, the video lesson will have a QR code that will go to that. So I got big ideas. I'm I'm working out how it's all gonna be interconnected, all that stuff. All that stuff. I'm just having a good time doing it. And that's what I'm saying it's going to take me a while. But I've already written out quite a bit. And so now i got to, you know, edit, 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 write, edit, 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 write. All that stuff. You bought a second bike, Hog Rider. Nice. It works well as people have different learning styles. You have text. Right? Exactly. So I've been working on uh, learning this whole time about, like, neurodivergent uh, people and how they learn. So uh, there's a lot of auditory, visual spatial learning, kinesthetic learning. Um, so I'm trying to hit everything because like right now, the reason why I'm doing this, for one, I'm having a lot of fun doing it. This is something I've always wanted to do and this is how I learn. So I'm having a lot of fun doing it, but it's like, there's what, what else is out there? Yeah, there's some stuff. You know, you got the MSF, you got Total Control and uh, Yamaha Champion Riding School is doing some great stuff now. But uh, I don't know. Are are those things really encouraging? I don't know. Is, is the sport growing? I guess I don't want to call it sport. Is it the hobby growing um, because of the education, or is the hobby growing because people want to get into riding? Well, the more people that get into riding, especially with with how we teach here, and especially with YouTube, it's like are the resources there? It's like I don't know. We'll see. We'll come up with a strategy guide. We got the online academy. Um, we'll do some, uh, peer mentoring, uh, we'll do some fun stuff and we'll see how it works. And so far this has been working. So, uh, you know, let's try something else. Looking forward to it. Will, how you doing? Gnarly Davidson, how you doing, man? Yeah. Yeah, I've been talking to some other people. Um, I've been meeting some other people and just been learning a lot. Been learning a lot this year. Yeah, uh, MSF, it's like, here's the dry information. Honestly. I mean, I taught it for a while. I taught it for two years. And it's just kind of dry. And it's like, move on, move on, move on to the next. And it's like, well, there's no real self-pace training. Interesting. I don't know. I don't know. We're going to get into this, guys. We're going to get into this. So we do have... 
uh, some stuff that we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about the MTC awareness stages today. Also, um, why you need gear. Now, if you're part of the MTC Rider Academy, you've already seen it. But uh, now we're integrating it into the show. We have about eight weeks. This is going to be an eight-week season. Uh, we're going to get into season two. So during these eight weeks, I'm going to be filming some other stuff for the Academy. And uh, yeah, we, we're jump-starting into a lot of stuff. We're, we're working working over here. And by we, I mean it's just me. <laughs> so... <laughs> Hey, you're welcome, Nate. I'm glad you've been able to learn something from it. I'm constantly trying to get better and better at this. Guys, I've been doing this for years now. Years now. And I'm having a great time doing it. It's, it's, I feel renewed. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have a good time here. So, let me make sure. It's like, what do we, what's the lesson? Okay, so the MTC awareness stage is very good. There we go. There we go. You guys know how we do it. 100 likes. Let's get into 100 likes. How you doing, uh, is it Elad? I forgot. I remember there was a way to say it. I remember there was a way to say your name. Um, let's get to 100 likes. There's 100 of you in class today. So make sure you guys sign in. Hey, welcome. Totally uh, not a noob. How you doing? <laughs> welcome to the senior crew. Uh, take a seat. We're going to get started on this. We're going to get started on this pretty soon. 100 likes. Once again, uh, if you want to have uh, more detailed knowledge of what we're doing here, make sure you sign up for the MTC Awareness. Or I keep saying MTC Awareness. That's what we're doing today. MTC Rider Academy. Uh, we're going to have more stuff coming in there pretty soon. So, uh, yeah, today we're going to be talking about the MTC Awareness stages and four ways uh, personal protective equipment can save your life. Let's make sure that we... Uh, Make sure I have that up. There we go. There we go. Let's go ahead and put the appropriate lesson on. Swing that back up. Very good. Can I wait? Go get a donut. Yeah, go get a donut. Man, I want a donut so bad. I usually get a donut every single day. but It's been a while. Been riding for four days now and I binge reviews before I got the bike and it helped me immensely. So thank you, Nick. Hey, you're welcome, Nicholas. How are you doing, HFT? I'm doing good. Let's get to 100 likes. Let's get to 100 likes. And we're going to start and make sure I have my pen. Okay, we got the pen. Very good. Very good. God, my YouTube views plummeted because we haven't been putting out videos in three months. It was nice to take a three-month break. It was nice that I didn't have to worry about anything, so I that really kind of goes down to you guys. Thank you so much for for uh, supporting this uh, venture for this long. Ah, thanks for the like. Be safe out there. Be safe out there. Let's go ahead and put snooze on you. For two hours. Du, 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 du. From Brazil, how you doing, Gustavo? Midget Mayo, how you doing? 89 likes, 11 more likes, guys. 11 more likes. And we're gonna get started. You guys know how we do it. We're gonna we're gonna record. We're gonna hit the record button. And then we're gonna uh, get right into it. And then these videos go up Saturday, Sunday, basically. So people that can't make it to the stream can watch the after action reviews. I haven't seen these. We have a backlog of Moto Stars videos. watching your videos since the summer glad to catch you live and brushing up my skills on honda shadow phantom 750 magnarip magnarimus jeez i probably mispronounced that one hope you're doing well man 
All right, 100 likes. 100 likes. Um, shots on you. Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. All right, guys, we're going to get this going, so we're going to hit that record button. All right, everybody, we're going to be watching this Moto Stars video. Uh, remember, this is an after action review, so we're going to kind of go over the crashes, trying to figure out what happened, how it happened, how we can prevent it for ourselves. It's always good to learn from other people's mistakes. Hello, everyone. Today, I've got another Bikers in Trouble episode for you. It's okay. To learn from the mistakes of others, so check this okay. out. Okay. You're right, Moto Stars. So, I know this is an older video. This is over three months ago. I've been on break. So, what happened here? What do you guys think? Write in the comments. Obviously, it was a low side. So, oh yeah, we got buttons, huh? Yeah, obviously it was a low side. Uh, went down on the right side in the corner. Yeah, I'm all right. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's take a look at this. So he's coming up to here. Now, what's one thing that we got to really watch out? Now, we always talk about planning your ride. So position for safety, locating hazardous situations, assessing, navigating. Well, what's a, what's a hazardous situation here? Well, we can't see really well around this corner. Okay, so we have a line of sight issue. Okay, we can't see around this corner. But here's what we're doing is that we're looking, let's go ahead and delete that real quick. We're looking right here consistently, but then what I'm doing is I'm constantly scanning back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to see if there's any gravel. So we see loss of traction, he crashed, panic front brake, uh, you know, gravel. So, okay, gravel. And then also maybe on the line. So the paint lines can be a little uh, slick, um, especially if it's just been raining and they don't put that granular stuff. Hey, Car Geek, welcome to the crew. Totally a noob, just gifted five memberships. We're going to see this. Five more or four more on that. Appreciate that. Safe. So he went a little bit wide though. Let's take a look. It's good to learn from the mistakes of others. So check this out. So he's going here. Okay, so somebody said panic braking. Can it, remember a crash is a it's a combination of multiple different factors. Multiple different factors in one. So gravel in of itself, not an issue. Gravel in a turn can be an issue. Gravel in a turn and then uh, applying too much front brake definitely can be an issue. Gravel in a turn. Applying the front brake and having bald tires, you see how it, those things can lead into crashes. So when you know that stuff, uh, check your tires. Make sure you aren't slamming the brakes. Make sure that in the turns you're looking for gravel. You see how you can start now um, picking out what you can and can't do. So I appreciate that totally. Not a noob with a five. And then gnarly Davidson, welcome to the crew. It's good to learn from the mistake. Welcome. Yourself. Clicking that join it's button. Right safe. So I have a feeling that he started going a little bit wide, got a little bit wide and panicked. You notice how we can see where we need to go. So at this point, you, know, you start to panic. You start looking towards the outside. You start looking this way. You start going that way. Oh, crap. You slam that front brake. If we just focus ourselves, like if you look at this and you're like, oh, no, I'm looking that way. Or, oh, no, I'm about to crash. Really focus yourself. Get a little bit, maybe a little bit anger. I don't know what's fear, whatever it is, that, that emotion that's driving some thoughts of, oh, no. Once you figure that out, once you get that trigger, really start to like, oh, no, I'm going to crash. Wait, no, I need to focus here. And you start staring at where you need to go. So you start looking at this, you get that fear. That fear is a trigger into saying, look back over here and commit. So instead of slamming the brakes, what you're doing is actually committing, putting your body into that, uh, that proper language to get yourself going that way. This was a mistake. Panic broke. Panic breaking. Dumps the bike. We have mechanisms of injury that we could possibly have, you know, with the right shoulder, right elbow, right hip. Thankfully, he's walking wounded. Not the biggest of deals. Um, problem is, is now that we have a damaged bike and maybe damaged ego. Not a lot of fun. Not a lot of fun. Let's move on to this one. I appreciate it. Yeah. Here we go. Mr. Homer Five. What's a what's a hazard here? Okay, we had line of sight issues. Maybe somebody. There you go. Good job recognizing that this could be something. What are you doing? Don't get too mad. Now we're blocking traffic. Now we're we're still in the flow. We have some issues. He was still going to do it anyways. He wants to get off on that exit. Okay. So, the emotional stuff, yeah, sure, you know, but maybe keep it in your head. Don't don't escalate the situation. Um we're going to skip these ads. YouTube put some stuff on here. Anyways. So, we're coming up to here. Let's go back. We have an issue here, so our escape paths aren't going to be the best. We can't swerve left, we can't swerve right very well because, you know, we have vehicles in the way. So what we have here uh, for our planning our ride, right, our navigating active threats, what we can actually do is do really good progressive braking. So really good progressive braking. We're going to treat it more like an emergency. There we go, finally. Uh, treat it more like an emergency. When you squeeze, you start getting a little bit of weight on the front tire, you can squeeze even more. That's all we really can do. That and acceleration, 
but if there's a car pulling out in front of us, we're kind of screwed. One thing we want to watch out for when we're uh, lane filtering is these big open gaps where people can merge into. And if you notice, when we get closer to the Tesla, there's a big open gap. So once you see that open gap from far away, remember we were talking about uh, locating hazard situations. We are in one, but we need to assess if there's any relevant threats. Okay, right now there's no relevant threats, but there's an opportunity for a relevant threat when we get closer and closer to these big gaps. So it's very easy to see that he is crossing. So our line of sight has been broken. So when it comes to that, we know that there's going to be something in front of us. So we have to start doing something. So applying the brakes and doing that. We're getting up to here. There's that gap. Okay, so you moved over. Rev bombing's not going to help you in a situation. You want to break. Now here, let's skip past this part. Right here we have traffic. Okay, you let him go. Just let him go so you can go because we have cars behind us. We don't know if those cars are going to stop and pay attention. So once we solve one problem, let's not create others. So we're looking to the right, but, you know, who knows? Maybe that black car can turn left in front of us. We have an open lane pattern there. All right, two-wheel therapy. Okay, this vehicle's in front. Oh, dog! So there you go. Good job slowing it down. Slowing it down, recognizing it. Okay, now accelerate. Now accelerate and get yourself out of there. Look forward so that you go in where you need to go. Oh, we went off road. Got a little bit of uh, some brush. Thankfully, we have uh, a helmet. Did he have a GoPro on his? Did it fall off? Got very lucky. Got very lucky. Why do you think that would have happened? Let's get over here. Why do you think that's happening? So we're talking about uh, riding your own ride when it comes to group riding. You know, passing, right? We're passing our buddies trying to go fast. When you go faster or when you have a high speed or you increase your speed in a turn, you're going to go wide. When you decrease your speed in a turn, you're going to go in. Okay, so that's why trail braking is so, so important or that's why going slow is so important. But trail braking can definitely help you actually turn in quicker because... That's that's what's gonna happen. If you accelerate, you're gonna go wide. It wants to stand it up straight. So when we're going wide, it's because we're trying to accelerate around our buddies. Let's go ahead and uh, take it easy because that could have been a lot worse, a lot worse. All right, ride three. Here we go. From this cyclist to a These cyclists are just get out of control. Get out of his way. Get out of the way now. Yeah, get out of the way. What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> That's easy to take off. Don't put in front of me, bro, because you're threatening me. Don't say something. Come here. I don't know what the... So at this point, you can just leave. The, the ego on, on some of these people are pretty dumb. I'm not going to watch uh, Road Rage. So once you get into a situation where you can just, like, leave the situation, just leave. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal. I, I get it, you know. Ego's a little bit bruised. You want to, like, uh, testosterone's kind of going up a little bit. Emotions start going up. Just leave. All right. Here we go. Nice little scooter. Let's get some real gloves. Little roundabouts. Remember, this is orange stage. We're a little bit prepped and ready for anybody coming out. He's looking. He's looking. Bro. Ooh. Oh, come on, man. Got lucky. Bro. What? Did she flip him off? Just go. Let him let him do let him uh let him get pissed. So people don't know how to use roundabouts here in America. And if you notice the the signage right here, the in the internal one is uh to turn left. I don't even know, I don't put arrows where the arrows are. And the outer one is to continue going. So we're getting up to here. Same thing. Now we can go straight. You're supposed to be following the arrow, or uh, supposed to be following the check marks. So that's where they're supposed to go. That's what they're supposed to do. We're supposed to do this. And so when people cut across like that, just be very careful. Make sure we're not intersecting. Pay attention. And it's exactly what this guy did. Bro, bro, come on, man. 
bro. They were both supposed to exit what? on that. Idiot. Here we go. Too fast, too soon. Here we go. We got side of the vehicle right there. You guys noticed that. Really? You guys noticed that. We should notice that too. Let's take a quick look at this. Okay, so remember, we're riding around. We're having a good time. We're going to talk about the MTC awareness stages. We're riding around. We're in yellow stage. We're zoned in, paying attention, making sure that we understand like where people are at. Uh, but we're not we're not super panicked because remember we're planning our rides. We're always consistently positioning for safety. We're looking for good line of sight, good space cushions, and our escape paths. Okay, we're locating hazardous situations. This is an intersection. This is pretty hazardous. It can be. Let's bring let's bring that back up. But we need to assess any relevant threats. And whenever I see, whenever I see this in an intersection, I go into orange stage. Okay, that's why it's orange, and that's why the A is orange. Now he's not pulling out. This car driver is not pulling out yet. Okay, so it's not a real th threat threat. It's not an active threat. Remember, we got to navigate those active ones. We're assessing if this is something relevant. And it's relevant because it can pull out in front of us. There's a lot going on in your head when you're riding. Okay, so this is a little bit past when you have your foundational exercises done, when you know friction zone, throttle control, how to do turns, how to actually manip manipulate the bike. So this is more of that uh, prefrontal cortex type stuff. This is more of the, the higher thinking strategies type stuff. That's why we're going to come up with a strategy guide. Uh, but yeah, we're coming up to here. All of a sudden, they start moving. Okay, so at this point, all we can really do is progressively break to slow it down, so we can um, increase that space cushion time. Okay, this is our space cushion. So we're breaking, 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 breaking. Hopefully, this person's past us by the time we get to here. But if we're just accelerating, you know, like we see some people accelerate so they can flip them off and get closer, and, because GoPros, you know, they're further than they look, or closer than they look. Um, Let's slow it down because once we slow it down, we're slowing it down, slowing it down. When this person goes, we might have an opportunity to swerve right. Because remember, we have two different things we can do in red stage. We can swerve. No, we have multiple things. Sorry. We can swerve. We can break or accelerate. Uh, so we want to get ourselves out of here. But we're looking for that escape path. And our escape path is going to be on the right side. Exactly what he did. Exactly what this rider did. Slowed it down. Swerved to the right. But here's the thing. When you take your hands off a primary control, which is a handlebar or in a clutch, um, you're opening yourselves up to a less, uh, let me think of these words, um, you're less efficient in your, in your swerve. Okay? If you needed to swerve, you're not going to be able to swerve super hard with just one hand. So what, right, what we have right here is that escape path, but we need to also swerve left. So until we're past the danger, don't do anything. Don't do anything like this. Just make sure that you're actually getting yourself out of this dangerous situation first. How you doing, organic grow? Uh, the rogue redneck. Interesting. Okay, we're... Oh, there you go. Good swerve. So exactly what I was just talking about. Exactly what I was just talking about. Did exactly that. So we're coming up to here. Okay, so we're intersection, orange stage. We're prepped and ready for everything. We see somebody right in front of us. Let's get what, get out of the way. There we go. We have somebody right in front of us, right next to the 512. 512, why did I say it like that? 512. Somebody right in front of us. He's already positioned to start swerving to the other side. Now, we don't want to accelerate and swerve because we're going to probably hit the back of this vehicle because motorcycles, can, I mean, it's an Indian Scout. It's a great bike. Uh, it's probably a Scout Bobber. He's got a quad lock going on right there. It's pretty nice. Um, anyways, <laughs> we don't want to accelerate too hard because we're going to probably run into the back of that. So he's going to go ahead and just move over. Now we're in a good spot again. Reposition for safety. Remember, position for safety. Now we're behind the white vehicle. Space cushion, right? We have a better space cushion to the left. And now we have a better space cushion line of sight. Can't really see much of the camera angle. is not the best. but And then he has time to wave for the other motorcycles. This is a really good situation. Um, really good job swerving. Really good, good job getting themselves out of this. Love it. Love it. Let's take a look. One of these bikes is definitely a intersection. His ability red. Right in two cars. Break, 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 break. With too much throttle in the corner, and this bike is right in a spectacular way. Ooh, so a little bit too much throttle. <laughs> Dump the bike. They're talking on some I'll Cardos. Talk. Link in the description for a Cardo pack talk. This one, this one. This one. So remember, remain calm. Ensure your own safety. We don't want to get hit ourselves. 
If there's any major bleeds, stop it. Quickly assess the severity. Okay, there's the, the symptoms of something that you can do. There you go, side stand down because we're going to lift the bike up. So control traffic a little bit, if you can. Seems like the rider's doing fine, so that's good. Look at the bike damage, that sucks. Let's get the bike off the road. Good job parking the bike. That was really good. So why do you think this rider crashed, okay? Why do you think they crashed? Now gravel, looks like a pretty good tread on the tires. In the corner. Why do you think they crashed? This is going to be a little quick quiz for you guys. Write it in the comments. I'm not going to say. But we're coming up to here. Let's go. I screwed that up for you guys. I want you guys to watch it one more time. Why do you think they crashed? Write it in the comments. Cold tires? I'm just reading the comments right here. But uh, good job positioning so that we can help out the rider. We talk about mechanism of injury. So what side of the rider do you think uh, got damaged in the crash? Right there. What kind of injuries do you think we might be having? Write that in the comments. This is, this is your quiz. Mid-video quiz. Especially with no gear, well, no pants and, and boots. So it looks like a motorcycle jacket, so that's good. The armor really helped out there. Here we go. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Holy. Is this a one way? Yeah, it's a one way. So we're turning <laughs> we're turning left off the right lane. Not good. Not good. Got very lucky there. So once again, we're coming up to an intersection, right? We have a weirdo with the brake lights on the right side. We don't know if they're turning right, turning left. Kind of gives you that weird feeling, so let's go into orange stage. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, we will talk about the MTC awareness stages. Um, but yeah, this is a orange stage where we're prepped and ready for something. We're covering our brakes. At this point, braking or swerving is not... I mean, maybe swerving left can help, but braking is not going to be the, the best thing we can do. Accelerating hard. And by accelerating hard, I mean giving it like an extra two points. You know, boom. You know, two out of ten. Two points. Get yourself out of there is really important. Totally new with the donation. $50 donation. Thank you so much. I want to thank you for everything you do. I was out with my boss about two months ago, and he went down pretty bad. So I started finding educational videos to make us safer in the future. I found your channel. I can say no one does it better. Totally not a noob. Thank you so much. $50 donation. Wow. Holy. Thank you so much. Yeah, remember to position yourself for safety. Locate this hazardous situation. And assess if it's a relevant threat and navigate. And this one is a good uh, escape path forward with some acceleration. Here we go. Martin Gold getting through here. Ooh, uncommon thing in a common situation. We got headlights in front of us. Good job slowing it down and moving over. I'm glad you're doing fine. Totally not a noob. Hopefully, you're, uh, remember, we have the academy, but we got a whole. Ooh, we had a passenger too. Uh, just keep watching all these videos. We're, we're back at it this year. Took a three-month break. Oh, can't do much there. So with the deer, there's not much you can do, right? There's not much you can do. So if we can avoid it, there it is. <laughs> I forgot I had that emoji. If we can avoid it, that's great. If we can swerve out of the way, that's great. But typically with deer, not much you can do. So what is it that we can do when it comes to the smart rider principles? We can acquire and use personal protective equipment. Let's get head-to-toe gear, guys. Head-to-toe, full face, gloves, jacket, pants, and boots. Just in case. Just in case. Because, man, it's going to suck if you crash into the ground because of that. And there's nothing you could have done. Avon, here we go. Oh! Is that a trash panda? It is a trash panda. <laughs> Uh, you can run those over. I'm not saying you should, but it's a small enough animal, so if you blip the throttle, your front suspension will go up just a little bit. You might be able to go over it, but best case scenario, you try to avoid everything. Just like that. Nice little swerve. Jeez. Unlucky rider. Here we go. The bikers lead to quite a dangerous uh, Okay. That's not definitely safe. There's a trash can right there. Swerve. Swerve. Oh. Good job with the braking. That could have been a lot worse. Try not passing on the right. Trash Panda probably just came from your attic, Viking. <laughs> you guys are absolutely wild. Go ahead and grab yourself a donut. Um, make sure you guys are being safe on the road, but let's keep watching this, okay? Let's keep watching. All right.
Nice little swerve. Okay, what was the pattern there? I know you guys missed it. Let's take a look at this. What's the pattern here? Write in the comments. We, we talked about it a lot. Um, it's been a couple months, I know. Well, let's refresh each other's memories here. What's the pattern that we're seeing? Uh, open lane, open lane, there's a gap. Open lane pattern. So what we typically see here, guys, thank you for reminding me. Thank you for reminding me here. We have a lot of cars stacked up. Okay, just think about it. If there's two lines, wherever you go, walking, just like you're, you're getting, you're ready to get some donuts, okay? There's two opportunities, two lines, but one line is absolutely full. It's just like this. And you decide to stand in that line. But you keep wondering, it's like, the people keep getting in this other lane, this other line, and they're getting their stuff and leaving. What are you going to do? You're just going to get in that line, right? You're going to switch over. Same thing with traffic. Same thing with traffic here. You're going to get over. Somebody is going to want to get over. Now, when we're in this lane, it's not as a matter of like, oh, here, let me get in front of you so I can get a donut. No, it's like, here, let me get in front of you, and I'm going to go like five miles an hour switching this lane while you're going 45. You're on a motorcycle. You hit having some issues, you can possibly die. So when we see this, and we're the ones traveling in this lane, we got to watch out for these people. Because when they do come out, we're going to have to do something. We're going to have to go into red stage. We're going to have to swerve. We're going to have to do whatever. But right now, what's happening is that we are in, um, we're in orange stage because we see that this is a hazardous situation because somebody can come out. And this can be the same thing for when you're driving, same thing when you're riding a motorcycle, riding a bicycle, whatever it is, getting in line for donuts. Whatever it is, always pay attention to that. It's an open lane pattern. It is something that can happen, or a, it's a dangerous situation because this can happen. So thankfully you saw it. How can we minimize um, some of the issues with that is that we talk about positioning for safety, right? So if we're off on this part of the lane, very easy, get right in front of us and have an issue. If we're in the middle of the lane, okay, pretty good. Not too bad. We still have some opportunities. But whenever I see this, okay, whenever I see this, what I'm doing is I'm off on the right. That's gonna give me an opportunity to switch over quicker. It's gonna give this big space cushion between me and the dum-dum that's gonna switch over, just in case. And then when it gets back to normal, I'm going back into the middle. And it all really depends. Remember, when we talk about positions for safety, what are we looking for? Good line of sight. Okay, we have to have really good line of sight. We wanna make sure we have good space cushions, and we wanna have uh, at least one escape path. Those are the things we're looking for when it comes to positioning for safety. But great job on the swerve, great job on the swerve, switched over, switched back, but be careful of all the other ones. Is he uh, delivering some food? Yeah, yeah, they're acting dumb. Move on, you're in, you're, you're in traffic. You're in traffic. Clone biker, here we go. Okay, intersection, stop sign. They crossed over. That's such a weird intersection because technically you're supposed to stop at the stop sign, right? Not the line. You're supposed to stop here. I think by law. I don't know. It's been. A, it's been. I should probably. I should probably reread. But I know like the white line right there. You're supposed to stop before that. It's. It's. Is a stop sign should be way up there. Anyways, truck coming over. Saw it. Remember intersections, orange stage. We're prepped and ready. Anyways, we're slowing down. Anyways. Uh, do I have anything for those that are on a diet? No, sorry. Donuts is all we got. There's no diets on Thursdays, right? I don't know who came up with that. I think I just did. Uh, so right here, what are you guys thinking for position for safety? Is this a good position? What is it that he has? Ooh, ooh, I don't like this. Yeah, slow it down. Switch lanes, get a better position. Now we can see. There you go. I like that position better. Switch lanes. Move on. Tailgating too close. So well, we just talked about position for safety. Look, we have our speedo blurred, right? And now it's not because we're going the speed limit. Come on, guys. Um, so it was behind it for a while at this point. Okay, cool. So when I was talking about uh, position for safety, okay, what I'm talking about is we want space cushions. So this is our space cushion. Okay, not a lot, especially at this speed. Not a lot at this speed. Takes about a second to react and a second, or I'm sorry, a second to perceive and a second to react. So two seconds. Two seconds before we're going to apply the brakes. If, they, if this guy slams the brakes, you're not going to be able to stop in time for total stopping distance. It's not going to be good enough, guys. So we're looking for space cushions. Not a good space cushion. 
our escape paths. We got some escape paths, but we got to work real quick within that space cushion. How's our line of sight? Can you see what's ahead of this vehicle? No. So let's take a look at this over here. Let's keep going. Now, now what's our line of sight? Much better. Space cushion's not good. Escape path now. We got to swerve really far over here, but we still have this. That's the cool thing about motorcycles, right? But all he has to do is kind of do that a little bit and you're off on the road or off road. Okay. Remember, we're continuously changing our position for safety based off of everything. Space cushions are terrible. Line of sight's pretty good. You can see really far. Uh, escape route, you got one. Okay, so when you start seeing this, when you're riding or driving, this is a good opportunity for you to move yourself. Okay, brake checking. Now we realize we need a better space cushion and everything. Okay, position for safety. Great uh, vision, so great line of sight. Space cushion's not the best. Uh, escape route is straight ahead. So if this person slams the brakes and they're going basically going like that, we could just continue going straight and we won't hit them. So it's a good escape path. We also have an escape path to the right. So that's pretty good, right? Okay. So head check, very good. Now take a look at this. Space cushion, right? Space cushion is way up here and here. Escape path, can't really swerve left. We can swerve right though. Okay, so we could do that. Uh, line of sight, same thing, really good. We are staggered with this vehicle. I still want to be a little bit, you know, more or be ahead of them. But uh, this is where we should be. So out of all those positions we kind of went over on this, this is the one. This is the one. And then right now, not good. Right now, even better. Don't get in front, though. All right, what do we got here? We got a corner coming up. Looks like a wet road. We have a guy passing. Is this a two-lane road or a one-way road? What's going on here? Cuts in front because traffic may be coming up. Okay. Things happen. Not a big deal. That's why you talk uh, to each other on your car to pack talks. Link in the description for discounts. It's an affiliate link. Help support. Oh. That person decided to go. Ah, don't do that. Don't be... Okay, this, maybe. Tight turns. This is where you practice your tight turns. I think that was a good opportunity to, to always look at the, the bittersweet part of this, okay? So it's a green. Yeah, they're not supposed to be blocking the intersection, but let's not get up on them. Because if the goal is to get around them, look how much room we have to work with. So this is just a regular turn. It's not a tight turn yet. It's not a tight turn yet. But we're going to get up to here. And now we, if we want to do anything, we got to do a tight turn. So practice your tight turns, guys. Don't, don't rev bomb. How you doing, Brady? 82, how you doing? Yeah, the road looks terrible. The road looks terrible. East, 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 east. East, talk to each other. Oh. Went through the gore area. Oh, hit the curb. <gasps> he kept it up? Ooh, you want to check your rim. Cody! Cody! What? Is, why is Cody taking off? The comms got disconnected. Safe. Yo, you good, bro? <laughs> yeah, check your rim because that would have done some damage. Okay. I would have checked oh it God, bro. Are you okay? on an exit, not while we're still uh -huh. here. Okay, hello. Yeah, suspension probably got damaged. Yep. Yeah, you gotta get a new front run. Yep. Oh, it's like. <laughs> Never mind. I was gonna say it's like it's like women hitting curbs. It's like, oh, what happened? Not a big deal. Cars demolished. Um, this is why we talk on our cardos. Okay, the car, the pack talk edges, bolds, all that stuff. They have really good long distance, really good. It's dynamic mesh. It'll reconnect and all that stuff. East, east, east. So he's saying east. It's like, well, I would just say left. Go left. <laughs> left at the. Cody. Cody. That sucks. There's the new rim right there. Ugh. You got to get a new front rim. All right, here we go. Oh, what are some hazards here? Okay, what are some things we got to watch out for, right? What are some things we got to watch out for? 
So our braking distance, our total stopping distance is going to be increased because of the lower traction and you want to be a little bit slower on the progressive braking. Possible oil in the middle of the lane. Thankfully, we're going to slide it out just a little bit. I was yep. out for a ride when this happened. I can't stand the TikTok voice. What do we got here? Real nice, thank you. Have a great day. What? I was fully expecting him to hit the kill switch, but... Just give it a little blip of the throttle. When that happens, just give it a blip of the throttle. Real nice. Thank Whoa. Look at that. Look at that. Remember, guys, the Saturday Scrambler? I'm going to take my Harley off-road. Like, I'm, I'm thinking of this right here. Hey, give it a little brown stage. Look at that. That looks like fun. Are we on a street bike, though? Are we on a street bike? Because we're going to have some traction issues with this gravel. Yeah, it's a street bike. We can still make it happen. No, no, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> so with, with this, just take it nice and easy. Grazie. Um, when we do slow speed maneuvers in the parking lot, we have a lot of traction, so we can do a lot of counterbalancing. But out here, you want to stay upright as best as possible, use that rear brake, and go as slow as possible. Especially on the turns. Thanks for watching till the end. Oh, you're welcome, Moto Stars. Thank you for uh, for posting some good videos. But uh, yeah, guys, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys later. You guys know how it goes. We just hit the record button, and we're going to get into the next few things. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get back to this. Let's get back to this. Now, remember, everybody, uh, what we do here is motorcycle training. Turn it down a little bit. Thank you. We do some motorcycle training. We talked quite a bit about the MTC awareness stages. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over this real quick, and then we're going to hop on the bike, and we're going to talk about uh, the MTC awareness stages. We're going to uh, kind of go through everything. And then we're going to come back into, come back in here and uh, go over the next video, and then we're going to talk about PPE, personal protective equipment. But here we go. So the MTC awareness stage, remember white stage, you're completely oblivious. The only time you're really in white stage is when you're sleeping or watching a TV show and you start to think about something else and you have like four things on your mind, you're just kind of not there. That's white stage. Highway hypnosis is white stage. So when you're riding, you finally figure out, oh shoot, it's been like 10 miles. Well, how did I get here? That's, you weren't paying attention. Yellow stage is where you really want to go, okay? That's the typical, that's probably 80, 90% of your riding. You're zoned in, you're actively looking for hazards. A lot of people say they like to zone out when they're riding. No, 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 you want to zone in. That's that flow state. Whenever you're doing something, let's say you're cleaning, you're doing yard work or work itself, being in your body uh, is, is what's really important because you're not thinking up here, you're focused on what's on the task at hand. So playing soccer, any sport, stuff like that, you're zoned in. Same thing on a motorcycle. We're zoned in for those active hazards. We're looking for things. We're planning our ride. And if we see anything and if there's any situation that can cause an issue, we go into orange stage. Kind of like, you know, higher, higher alert. We're figuring out, okay, I'm coming up to intersection. What typically happens in intersections? Path of travel violations. We start having those issues. Um, corners, same thing. Hey, gravel. We start seeing all these things in the after action reviews. Usually corners and intersections are causing the problems. So that's when we go into orange stage. And it could be anything. A, a soccer ball rolling into the street. You're in a neighborhood. Soccer ball rolls in the street. Guess what? A kid's probably going to chase after it. High alert. So any clues that it's going to be something, got to be paying attention. That's when we go into orange stage. Remember, these are just kind of like emotional awareness stages here, right? Zoned in. We're paying attention in our body. Orange stage, we're thinking, what's going on? We're going to start developing some strategy. This doesn't feel right. My gut says something. Red stage, uh, either fear or it's going to be like an anger feeling. Anger could be good. It's going to utilize you. It's going to make you move, right? So that soccer ball comes out. There's a kid. Let's not get angry at the kid, but let's get that emotion, that drive, the adrenals kick in and do an active thing, which is going to be swerve, emergency brake, emergency accelerate even if we have to, looking for those escape routes during orange stage. 
Now we know what we can do. Brown stage, we just straight up panic because we went from white straight to brown. Or we have a lack of, uh, yeah, white straight to brown where it's like we panic because we don't know what's happening. All of a sudden it does happen at us. Uh, but it can also happen if we don't have the proper training. You know, we're out riding, we're a brand new rider. Um, this soccer ball comes out, don't think about it. All of a sudden the kid runs out. You haven't been practicing your swerving. You haven't been practicing your mercy braking. You haven't been practicing your, even your acceleration. Um, so you panic brake, right? So you lock up the front brake or you lose some traction. You dump the bike or you swerve into the parked car instead of swerving to the other side. So these are all things that we want to practice, yellow, orange, and red stage. But what we're going to do is we're going to head out, um, everybody. We're going to go ahead and head out to the bike. Follow me. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk about MTC awareness stages. All right, everybody, we're going to be talking about the MTC awareness stages. There's five of them. There's going to be white, yellow, orange, red, and brown. Now, these stages are like uh, mindsets that you get into. Okay, we got an intersection right here. This is going to be orange stage. Uh, and then we're going to be going back into yellow stage. I know I'm going to talk about that. These are the stages that get you into that mindset. I love colors. It makes it to where things are easy, color-coded. You know, stop signs are red, right? We have caution signs that are uh, orange or yellow, depending where you're at. Uh, street signs are green. It, it helps you find those things that are out there before you even see the words. We're gonna be talking about white stage right now. In white stage, what that is is that you're completely zoned out. What you wanna be is in yellow stage where you're zoned in, you're prepped and ready, you're looking for things. You see road surface hazards, you're scanning the road, but at the same time, you're relaxing. You either have music, whatever. White stage, a typical version of white stage is that you are sitting on the couch watching TV, oblivious to everything around you. You're walking on the sidewalk, you're staring at your phone. You have no idea what's going around you and you fall into the fountain or you run into somebody. That's what white stage is. Now, when you're riding a motorcycle, white stage, you don't want to be in white stage when you're on a motorcycle because you're just going to run into things. Now, what happens when you're looking at your phone, one second, we're orange stage because we're going to the intersection, don't want to get hit by anybody. We're getting back into yellow stage right now decent space cushion what's happening with uh with with white stage is all of a sudden you look up and you're about to run into somebody when you're looking at your phone you panic you're like oh that's what brown stage is when you have that panic moment so you're maybe playing with your phone all of a sudden you look up you see a car oh no and you slam the brakes and you dump the bike that's brown stage we do not want to do that so these are the two stages out of the five that you do not want to be a part of you don't want to be uh doing you want to stay zoned in the best way you could do that well yellow stage we, right now we're going to orange stage we'll talk more about that we got a side of the pedestrian right there yellow stage we're zoned in we're prepped and ready we're we're just kind of enjoying our ride we're not paranoid yet orange stage is when we're like in intersection corners we're a little bit paranoid but once we get out of here i'll show you what yellow stage looks like we're looking at the road we're kind of keeping ourselves in a good space cushion kind of giving ourselves these areas around us that we have this buffer zone um, we're just enjoying ourselves it's about 80 percent of your ride for the most part uh, you're maybe listening to music. You're not you're not zoned out, but what you're doing is that you're scanning and you're keeping your mind sharp. You're looking at the mirror, looking at your speed, looking forward, looking at your mirror, looking forward, looking at your speed, doing a quick head check around you. You're kind of prepping yourself just in case something happens. You're prepping yourself. Hey, doggo. You're prepping yourself just in case you have to go into orange stage, which is going to be an intersection, because then you're starting to look for uh, your or trying to have your escape path but you're looking for left turners you're looking for road surface hazards you're looking for all these other things but you're preparing yourself for that orange stage think of it as you going to the grocery store getting the ingredients and this is yellow stage because you're you're not in danger you're not having to rush to make that food because you're not in the kitchen things aren't boiling over but you're you know you're prepping yourself you're getting ready you're getting ready i'm gonna let these people go i'm not gonna go as fast as them so they can take off and increase my space cushion for me there we go that's good and so you're at the grocery store grabbing your stuff, but then once you get back and you're in the kitchen with all your ingredients and you're having to, you know, go against the timer, you're having to, you have three different pots going, you got the oven going, that's when you're in orange stage. I'm watching out for this open lane pattern we got here. So right now I'm in yellow stage, just kind of, just okay. You know, everything's fine. This guy might want to get in front of me, but uh, I'm just doing, there it is, just doing fine, relaxing. I have an intersection coming up. Now I'm going to transition into that orange stage. So I did all my prep work, got all my ingredients. Now I'm going to go into the kitchen and I'm going to get ready to look for things that might jump out at me. I don't want to burn water. <laughs> yeah, we're in orange stage 
right now we're going through an intersection i don't want anybody hitting me and i am looking for the road surface hazards maintaining my space cushion i'm going to increase it even i don't have a great escape path but i'm nice and uh away from this vehicle i don't like it too much though i'm going to roll out the throttle and now i'm going over here so i'm staggered with them if you noticed orange stage there's a lot of actions going on to just kind of position yourself better you're not swerving you're not a mercy breaking you're just you know you're paying attention and the goal with the orange stage is to re-establish your space cushion to re-establish your position for safety to get yourself in a better area so that you can get back into yellow stage and so i use the cooking example you know yellow stage you're at the grocery store you're grabbing all the stuff you know you have your list you could take your time you're not paranoid you're listening to music enjoying yourself saying hi to everybody you know relaxing go ahead, turn left here and then all of a sudden you have to get back into the kitchen and here we go we're going to be you know rushing through things we're going to make sure that we have things in the right order we're prepping ourselves we got the table set up so when we're in orange stage which is what i'm doing right now is that because i'm in an intersection intersections are orange stage we have to look for these hazardous situations we have to see hey you know are we going to be boiling over no i mean are we do we have gravel in the road i don't see anything right here for the, my whole path anybody coming up behind me yes we have one person behind me uh, coming up, but I'm paying attention. I'm off to the side. Okay, now we have to figure out, you know, when I get to the other side, are we safe? Are we good? So this is that little bit of a paranoid situation, but it's not that bad. You get used to it. So when it comes to this orange stage, it's just to get you in that mindset of you're switching from, hey, I'm zoned in, relaxing, listening to music, maybe just, you know, chatting with my buddies to, hey, everyone calm down. I'm turning down the radio. I need to find that parking space. That's all we're doing. We're, we're taking our brain. We're taking all the the cognitive overload and just reducing it to the point where we're focused so there's another example of you know you're staring at the screen right now you're staring at my head but what's over here you have to change your focus to my hand usually you could just use your peripheral vision for everything around me but you're staying focused on me let me say hi to this guy there you go so if you have to uh, use your peripheral vision that's like yellow stage you know you're just kind of using everything you can see everything but once you're like hey i gotta focus that's orange stage and that's what we're doing here we're focused at intersections we're focused at finding escape paths we're focused on accelerating if we have to we have our hands over the brakes we're covering our brakes might even roll up the throttle a little bit so we get some weight on that front tire because we're getting some engine braking going we're doing anything everything possible to prepare ourselves in case we have to go into red stage a little bit now red stage is kind of like brown stage where we have to the other side of the vehicle right here we're gonna roll the throttle yellow uh, orange stage Okay, we got somebody right here to my right. I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a space cushion. And we are back to yellow stage. Okay, so red stage, what that is, like I said, it's just like brown stage, we have to perform an action. Something just came out at us. You know, that side of the vehicle came out. If they kept going and they stopped in the middle of the road, oh, I gotta do something. I gotta swerve in the next lane. I gotta do something. If I panicked, that's brown stage. Red stage, we did something. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn right. I like turning right. I don't know why I said that, but we're going to go over this way. Okay, watch out. Orange stage, perfect and ready. Just in case. There we go. Very good. All right, so we got a yield. I'm going to watch out. So while I'm talking to you, so red stage, you know, if, if a side of the vehicle pops out, okay, we can go. It's a green. You got it. You got it. Yeah. Uh, if something pops out, we have to do something. We have to do emergency swerve. We have to do emergency braking. We might have to accelerate to get ourselves out of a spot. We might have to just you know, switch complete lanes into here and turn left if there's a car that stopped here. Whatever it is, we have to do something to avoid. A lot of it's accident avoidance. People can come out in front of you and you have to avoid them, or you can go towards an object and you have to avoid that object. That's typically what happens in uh, corners, so like especially in the mountains. People start to go super duper fast, and what happens is that they go a little too fast for their uh, experience, and when they see like a tree or a big rock or something, they're like, oh, what is that? And they go towards it. No, you start to do that. That's brown stage. You have to pop yourself back into red. You have to do something. So let's pretend right here that there's a vehicle just immediately stopped in front of me. Like they're, they're just coming out in front of me. So what I have to do is like, oh, crap, red stage. I have to swerve. I have to get myself out of that and then get myself in a better spot. These are things that you're going to have to practice. It's easier to practice in a parking lot. But what I like to do when I'm out on the road, not like this kind of road, this is some traffic. When I'm out on a road where there's like no traffic, I use the manhole covers. I use potholes in front of me. I see discolorations in the road and I practice my swerves. This person's gonna, ah, almost, I'm gonna turn right. So like right here, we got a manhole cover. Oh, swerve around it. 
you know, manhole cover, oh, swerve around it, and then I gotta start applying the brakes. So red stage, actively avoiding an object and actively avoiding crashing into something by utilizing the skill set that you have practiced in a parking lot. That's what red stage is. Remember, these are just uh, awareness stages. These are things that will get you in that mindset so you're understanding what you should be doing. So we have white stage completely zoned out, yellow stage, we are zoned in, paying attention to what we should be doing. Like right now I'm looking and there's no gravel on the road. We got a vehicle. No, we still got some time. Orange stage, intersections, corners, anything that gives you that gut weird reaction of something might be going on. Just cover those brakes, look for escape path, do what you need to do. Red stage, we actively have to do something to get ourselves out of danger. We have to swerve, emergency brake, it, accelerate super hard. We got a yield arrow right here. Let's go ahead and go. And these are things that will just get you in that mindset, okay? None of it is gonna be uh, telling you exactly what to do. You have to get yourself in that mode. Sport mode, ringing mode, beginner mode, you know, standard mode, all the modes that your bike has. These are the modes for your brain when you're out riding, okay guys? How's everybody doing? Nice little, uh, nice little ride out there. We're gonna work on the transitions, guys. Calm down, calm down. A little bit of movie magic. We're gonna work on that. <laughs> How's everybody? <coughs> How's everybody doing? Uh, yeah, those are the MTC awareness stages, guys. Make sure that we are paying attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, we got another video. We got another video. Make sure we're out there paying attention, making sure that we're actually doing what we need to be doing. Um, have any of you had a, a brown stage recently? Not this morning, not, not a, not, not a, guys, relax, okay? Um, anybody, like, catch themselves in, you know, white stage and everything? Anybody catch that? Catch themselves doing that? How you doing, passenger? How you doing? Thank you, Faraday, I appreciate that. Yeah, that was, eh, you guys know how it goes. Eh? That, that's actually, that was actually, uh, Lesson one through, I think, five on uh, the MTC Rider Academy, the basic smart rider. So that's actually one of the lessons at the Academy. So if you want to watch the rest, um, go ahead and sign up. But over the next eight weeks, we'll be putting these out. So uh, we have some new ones coming up. Any videos on counter steering and when to use and not use it? Ah, that must have been a while back. Counter steering is so intuitive. It's... Maybe I'll be able to put that out again. Um, quite literally, could just push a little bit on that handlebar and it'll start turning on you. Um, try not to overthink it. It's naturally happening when you're when you're out riding. Yeah, it's it's a natural it's a natural thing. Direct steering. Think of it like think of it as it's not even like a a, a difference. Well. Direct steering is the one thing that you're truly like focused on because you're actually like turning it where you want to go. Counter steering, it's just it's almost like the bike is doing it naturally and you're barely putting some inputs into it as long as you're just trying to turn. It's a, it's one of those um what, is it? what other metaphors I can use? You go to the gym. And, and there's, you know, pull-ups and then bicep curls, right? So direct steering is like bicep curls where it's a it's an isolated thing that you're doing and you know exactly what it's working. Um, and then uh, pull-ups would be like counter steering because you're, you're still working the bicep, but you're not even thinking about it, if that makes sense. It's like a compound exercise. I don't know. I'm working on the metaphors, but hopefully that made sense. Um... I guess I just need more time. Yeah, just a little bit more time. Try not to overthink that one. Try not to overthink that one. All right, guys. I think we're going to jump into that. Is that pretty spot on? I don't know. I just came up with that on the spot. Just can't. <laughs> I think I still got it. I think I still got it. Let's go ahead and put that back down. Uh, what do we got next? We have... Th yeah, there we go. That made sense to you? Okay, sweet. Sweet. Still got it. Still got it. This person's not looking too good. Guys, we're going to have to rescue them. Man, I come up with the weirdest analogies and metaphors. 
And that's why we're doing this strategy guide. It's, it's, uh, it's based off of the hero's journey and video games on how to teach motorcycle riding. <laughs> oh, man. All right, guys. We got uh, basically another whole lesson to go. We have this video. And then we're going to talk about gear. We're going to be out here uh, in my office, in the studio, to, to show you guys what gear uh, four ways PPE can save your life. How can we access your parking lot drills? So there's the shop or the MTC Rider Academy, or you can go to uh, Motorcycle Training Concepts YouTube channel, and I have all the videos there. But if you want to get the actual drill booklet um, with all the drills, the, the physical booklet's on the shop. All right, guys, uh, we're going to jump into this one, and we're going to hit that record button. So here we go, everybody. We have Biker's Worst Nightmare. We got lots of people crashing, getting hurt. We got, ooh, CHP right there. Once again, Moto Stars. Now, this is an after action review. We're going to try to figure out what happened so we can prevent these accidents for ourselves. Bike by scrapping the kickstand quite strongly against ooh, Sharp left turn, Chevrons. Don't low side. There it is. Good job on the rider for standing it up and applying the brakes and not panicking themselves. So let's give that guy kudos. It was an accident on the other rider, but why do you... Oh, great U-turn, too. What do you think happened here? How do you think it happened? He lost control of his bike by scrapping the kickstand quite strongly against the asphalt. Okay, so Motostar says the kickstand against the asphalt. That can do it. That can do it. It grabbed. We're really far down. Really far down. Look at that body angle. But it looks like that, yeah, uh, kickstand could have pushed up the rear tire just a little bit and lost traction and swung it out. Uh, rear tire could have just straight up lost traction because there's not enough tread on the ground. Accelerating through, gravel, all those things. It could be something there. But what's the one thing that really saved him acquiring using personal protective equipment? We'll talk about that a little bit later during this live class, which we are back at it, doing it on Thursdays, typically before 12 uh, p.m. Mountain Standard Time. My goal is like 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time on Thursdays, guys. Yeah, too much lean, kickstand, too much throttle. There's all these different factors. Remember, it's not just one factor that can contribute to a crash. It's not always, right? One factor quite literally could be like a, I don't know, you falling down in gravity. Um, even then, uh, you not using your feet, no side stand. Like, there's so many different things. Anyways, let's go ahead and move on to this one. Open lane pattern, person's coming over into our lane. We're gonna switch over, not a big deal. They wanted to switch back over, but we swerved a little too hard. Swerved a little too hard. Swerved a little too hard. Time started to dilate. Now we're going slow motion, you know, something. He's going through a black hole or whatever. Anyways, we're going up to here. Okay, person decided to switch over. Decided not to. So typically just wait. What's the rush? Right? What's the rush? But I get it. Now we, we have our space cushion removed. Our escapes are messed up. So when it comes to positioning, this is going to be a bad position now. So what we're going to do, we located this hazardous situation, assessing it's a relevant threat. We're going to navigate this relevant threat. We're going to do a nice swerve to the left. But you have to swerve back. You can't just keep swerving left. And I get it. We're rev bombing, right? So we have all these different things going on, guys. We're rev bombing. So now we're not going to be able to use acceleration. We have our clutch pulled in. What about progressive braking? Now our space cushion. This guy swerved back over our escape path. Terrible situation. But what is it that we have control over? We don't have control over what this guy does. We have control over us. So what we can do is make sure that we're not continue to swerve. We can start applying some brakes and utilize the skill set that we've been practicing out there in the parking lot using the parking lot, you know, the smart rider motorcycle training drills. We can adjust our speed. We can adjust our brakes, our primary controls, right? Let's do that. But we continue to go over. At no point did anybody hit him. No point. Yeah, uh, slow down, wait for what the truck driver is finally going to do, and that's something that, that we have control over. And if you're not in a rush, you, you're able to handle that. Think about it. Um, when, whenever you're hungry, you get a little bit hangry, and that's going to dictate your actions. If you're tired, it can dictate your actions. Um, there's so many different things that can dictate your... Medical conditions can dictate your actions. If you're in a rush, it's going to dictate your actions. 
So start paying attention to what's happening internally because that usually starts to leak out externally. So just, just wait. All right, we're doing some wheelies. Oh, no gear. Oh, road rash. We weren't even 10 minutes. What kind of mechanism of injury do we have here, guys? Taking a shower for the next, what? I don't know how long. Eight weeks? Whatever. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. We weren't even 10 minutes into this group ride when the truck on the left decided it couldn't pass SpongeBob? and wanted to cut my friend off instead. See, that's one thing that... And that's fine. Let them in. So when it comes to group rides, this is why I'm working on something called squad riding. I'll share with you guys uh, a little bit here. So squad riding. I'm working on this. Okay, it's not fully out there yet. So I'm working on squad riding. You can pause it if you want so you can read the goals and objectives. So the, the goal of squad riding is that it's modular. There's, able, there, there's a way for, for this all to be broken up. When it comes to group riding, like right now, is that people tend to think, hey, we're in a group ride. It's one big, long entity. So nobody can get in between. And I don't like that mentality because we are also on the road sharing the road with other people. So we're sharing the road here. So if this was like a 40-foot, a 100-foot, a football field length group ride, how are people supposed to switch lanes? There's nothing else on the road that, that is that long. So when we have this situation happening where there is gaps, that's because that's there's gaps. Just like if there's cars, there's gaps in cars. Just because you're in a group doesn't mean you're one entity. So when this person does come over, yeah, it, it, it is dangerous. Okay, there's two, there's two sides of this, right? It's dangerous for us. And also the car driver, it's like, come on, I, there's a gap and I, I need to get off. If you're, a, if you're just a bunch of cars, I, would, I have a gap. I could do it. There's both of that. So my thing is, how do we make all this safe? And that's where I was working with the, the squad riding. But when we see this, allow them to go through... Communicate on your Bluetooth systems. Communi if, if You guys already talked about this in a pre-ride uh, meeting where it's like, if anybody does this, we're going to continue on with their path. Make sure you guys have good line of sight so you can see who's in front. Make sure that you have good space cushions with this new vehicle. Try not to pass unless it's safe to do so and get right back into the situation. There's so many different things that we could be doing in here other than getting pissed off. That's what I'm trying to get at. Okay, guys, I'm trying to find solutions to this too with the squad riding. Completely no sign. MT10 the addiction. The approaching intersection. Near miss. Delivered. There we go. Unmarked intersection. Ooh, orange stage, right? Well, what do you mean unmarked? What makes it marked? What makes it a marked intersection? Because when I see this, I saw that there was an intersection coming up. This right there of the approaching. What, what do you think indicates that there's an intersection when you're seeing this, right? It says unmarked. What's indicating an intersection? Right here for you guys. Right in the comments. For me, what I see is that there's there's stuff. There's there's th there's you can pull off. There's there's ways to get off the road. So back here, there's no ways to get off the road. It's not an intersection, right? There's no ways to turn right, there's no ways to turn left. We have solid white. But up here from reaction appropriate we have people able to get off and on. Also, we can't see very well around here. I start seeing this stuff. That's in, that We're starting to get into an area where there's possible intersections. So I'm already in orange stage, right? Just because I don't see an intersection doesn't mean I'm not in orange stage. I'm covering the brakes. But I see that stuff, and that lets me know. Now we have side of the vehicle. Yeah. I don't know. That's a, to me, that's what I see. Write in the comments what you see and what, what indicates an intersection for you. Especially when we have GPS... Reaction appropriately. ABS kicked in, so that was good. Maybe you didn't see it on the GPS. 
But it's interesting because you start, you have to edit this and put that in there. All right, here we go. Overtaking just before a blind corner. Okay, good job, good job. Yeah, bad, bad on that driver. Great job with the braking. Bad on that driver. That was dumb with that driver. I would overtake here, right? All right, moving on. And tech. Here we go. Yeah, we're going to do some wheelies. Hopefully not crash it. Or is he just leaning forward? Okay, he's just leaning down. He's still going zero miles an hour. Crashed going zero miles an hour. Oof. Going a little too fast, hit a corner. Going a little too fast, hit a corner. Not good. Thank you, totally noob. Appreciate that. Chuck G997, here we go. It looks like California, right? Yep. Okay, we got anybody merging into us? No? Okay, space cushion, space cushion. Okay, switching over. Yep, that's me. Whoa! What'd he hit? Oh, there was something there. I saw a, something black. So I've seen some videos and some people, it's like exiting when it's still double yellow, it's it's illegal, I guess. But yeah, common practice. Okay. Well, I'm going to share it, my opinion. Head check, very good. Did a good job. Oh. Oh. Just terrible situation. Just terrible situation. Definitely not what we wanted. That's going to do it. There's nothing you can do about that, but other than wear full gear, but landing on your spine. Oof. Full gear. He's got to show you. That's very good. This is why we have back protectors. Make sure you check your gear. We're going to talk about gear after this, but check your gear for the back protector. Get some D30 armor in the back of that. Some level two. Oh, thankfully he didn't get hit. Passenger jumped out before the car was even stopped. Very good. Well, people are just trying to go. People are trying to go. Terrible situation. Um, so how do we rescue this rider? First, we got to remain calm ourselves so we don't get hit. Guy jumped out and the car is still moving without regard to his safety. Glad it didn't turn out bad, but imagine him getting hit. Now there's two patients. Uh, so ensure your own safety. Stop any major bleed. So if he's bleeding out anywhere, this is why we have tourniquets and, and, and everything in our, uh, our uh, rescue packs. Um, and then quickly assess the severity. He did land on his head and he landed on his spine. So if you start getting disoriented, nauseous, start repeating the same questions over and over and over again, uh, be very careful with that. Spinal cord injuries. I would fully suspect the spinal cord injury, so I'm going to leave him there. Um, control traffic, leave him there until EMS shows up. Uh, shock symptoms, I wouldn't be too worried about that unless he's bleeding out. But the treatment for any of this stuff is lay him down, keep him warm. Um, to total, gosh, that sucks, man. Hitting a... Hitting that battery. So you don't want to block all the traffic. I would probably just block the yeah, I wouldn't block everything because now you're gonna create probably other accidents. Alright, let's keep moving, guys. Yeah. I get it. You just gotta watch out. Start heading, uh, if you can, have someone go down further and just start slowing down traffic because people won't see this till last second. No, 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 hold on. There we go. Let's see if there's more. Yeah, 
Alright, don't move. Gear saved him. She's gonna she's gonna go die too. Awesome, it's not even broken. That's amazing. Hollywood. So he's got his own EMS bag. He said he hit something in the road. It's all there was the road, man. There was something on the road. Was okay, moving on. Very cool. All right, here we go. Adam Jones. Good to learn from the mist. Intersections, well, maybe? Right Deer? Here we have a good example of how dangerous gravel is on the road. Gravel. We got some gravel issues. Got some gloves. Got it looks like a jacket. Ooh, went a little wide. He was going a little wide anyways. So I'm gonna go ahead. Oh yeah, that's why you also wear full gear. He's got full gear. It looks good too. Is that like tobacco motor wear? He's got some good looking gear. A little cafe racer looking bike. A little brat bike. All right. So I have a feeling. Yes, gravel. Right. Turned way too late. Why do you think he turned way too late? So this is what I like to do. I like to steel man some arguments here. I like to make sure that we we kind of go down the rabbit hole on what happened. Right. So we're coming up to here. Gravel is on the road. Don't worry about the gravel. Don't look at the gravel. Look how wide of a turn we did. You know, how kind of doing this, right? Where's our nose pointed right now? Where's our nose pointed? Why do you think he's at this position and not in this position yet? Why is he over here? Let's think about it. So he's look. He maybe he's staring at the gravel. So target fixation. You guys think target fixation might be the thing? What else? Turn could be smoother. Yeah, he was going a tad fast, but gravel sneaks up on you and makes a simple turn a serious problem. Fundamentals are needed for this exact reason. Colin Clark. That's where I'm. That's where I'm headed. I think he was going too fast. Going to girlfriend's house and missed the street. <laughs> Please, I'm that's what I'm thinking. I think he was going too fast. Look at when he started applying the brakes. Look at his right hand. Example of how dangerous gravel is on the road. And now he's starting to slow down for the turn. I think he was going to miss the turn. I think it was going too fast. And think about it. We're going a little bit faster than we normally would. We're going towards the edge with the gravel. And since we're going faster than we normally would, we're squeezing the brakes a little bit harder than we normally would. And we're about to go off-road. So if we really think about it, it's like, oh, the gravel's the problem. No, 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 no. Gravel's a factor. Hard braking is a factor. Not turning how we're supposed to be turning is a factor. But what's what do you think is the main factor here? Something that we can control. We were going too fast for the turn. We were going too fast for the turn. Rider error is definitely going to be something here. And this can, this can happen to anybody. So for me, like, if you're going too fast, just go to the next exit and do U-turn. Sometimes that's what you have to do, right? So if you're going too fast, I missed my turn. Let's say the turn was right here. So I was supposed to turn there, right? Let's say I didn't, I didn't make that turn. So it's like, oh, no, I'm going too fast. I'm going to slow down and stop right here. Look both ways for traffic. Do a U-turn and then go through the turn. That's what I would have done. I say that, but who knows, right? Well, he's on the road. But I've done that in cars. I've not pulled off to the side, but I pulled off on the next next intersection, which is up there. If it's if it if you're not gonna make the turn, don't go for it. I'd rather miss the turn than have this happen. But yeah, speed. Too much speed for the turn. That's all. That's why having my GPS is really important. All right, here we go. Uh, we got brake lights up ahead. Brake lights, the orange stage, prepped and ready. Ooh, swerve, swerve. See how you didn't see any of that stuff? Let's go back. So we got brake lights up ahead. You can't see much. Going real fast. Going real fast. Okay, we have good line of sight. We're right in the middle. We're in the lane filtering splitting position. So at this point, oh crap, we got to swerve. Thankfully, he swerved and didn't panic. So this is a good red stage maneuver, right? Your goal is not to have many red stage maneuvers, but if you're acting reckless, you're going to have a lot. So if you're catching yourself constantly swerving out of danger, emergency braking, emergency accelerating, it's not the traffic that's on the road. The traffic is pretty predictable. It's, the, it's probably something that you're doing. Your goal is to minimize how many red stage maneuvers you have to have. Tiger, yeah, cool color beard now. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. All right, 
right, here we go. Watch out, open lane pattern. Our lane is moving faster. The car on the right might want to switch into us. We're in a blind spot. Yep. You guys saw that, right? Look at our lane is moving. That person is tailgating, basically. We're in the blind spot. Open lane pattern is emerging. And they switch over. They didn't check. Now, we're, like, getting pissed. Yeah, sure. They should have checked their blind spot. But they didn't. They didn't. What do we have control over? Where we position ourselves for safety, right? Hey. We have to locate these hazardous situations because they're not going to do it for us. We're the only ones that can control our safety. My super slow moto. I was coming up to this intersection at a nice calm speed when all of a sudden my bike shuts down and I go uh -oh. bump start in the corner like an idiot and my back tire locked up. What happened? Back Check tire locked up. Cool skin mark. Did he have a the chain break or something? I don't know. Interesting. Ooh, okay. Not a big deal. Apply some brakes. Progressive braking. It's going to solve that problem. And despite his undoubted guilt, he decided to confront the biker. Okay. Not a big deal. We're moving on. We're moving on. Yeah, let's That's cool. Here we go. Dragon Rider Productions. She's coming over. Whoa. Okay, so she started moving over. You accelerated past into an escape path. Good job. Ooh, this person's just kind of going crazy. I think there's a little bit of a road rage thing going on here. So when you see that, let them stay in front, stay back. It's not always your fault, but you know, take a look and see what you've done. Okay, it's bad, bad space cushion, bad line of sight. Good, now it's better. They're, sw they're not switching over. Stay back to figure out what they're going to want to do. More than likely get back in our lane because you have that car in front that's slow. Very indecisive, but right here, it's a bad space cushion, not good line of sight, and escape paths are bad. So this is a terrible position for safety. What you can do is roll off the throttle, allow them to basically continue their speed while you're slowing it down and uh, get yourself out of there. Terrible driver. Okay. Positioning, switching over. Right behind, see how you can't do much? There's an open lane pattern because our lane was moving. Same reason why we switched is the same reason why they switched. But uh, they don't see us because we're on motorcycles and inattentional blindness really plays a part in that. So Bay Moto area, same thing. Okay, we're gonna switch over. Get back over. Watch out, the car right there in front of you is getting, getting a lot bigger. That means we're getting closer. You're gonna have to keep doing that, guys. You gotta keep doing that. Apply the brakes, not a big deal. You guys are switching over, just apply the brakes. We get some good progressive braking going on, not a big deal. Oh, hit a little bump. Probably scared him a little bit. Got a little wide. Why are you shaking your head? You should just be happy that they're fine. You see the little bump that they hit? It's probably a manhole cover. Yeah, he probably hit the manhole cover. Got a little bump, messed up the trajectory. Maybe new rider. I know this is their job. They just got into it. Let's say, let's just go down the rabbit hole. Maybe this person's never ridden a motorcycle. There's a delivery job opening, but you have to start riding. Maybe they did a little bit of training or light on their application. And now they're riding a motorcycle with some uh, some food in the back. And it's, you know... They're trying to do the best. They don't know how to ride too well. Hit the bump. Supposed to try to make that turn. It, it messed up their handlebars, so they panic a little bit. They got into brown stage, and they start going a little wide. We should be happy they didn't crash because they applied good progressive braking. Switch back over. Now, imagine going a lot faster than that. You start having issues. Two wheels dasher. Okay. Oh! Scooter. Price turn that thing pretty hard. Oh, don't do this. Don't pass on the right when there's in, in the same lane. He didn't do that on purpose. He just No, 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 no. 
He's using the lane. The Civic driver turned into the lane. And just is using the lane. That that section that you're riding on, it's not your that's not your personal lane. You're not even lane filtering correctly. Anyways, uh Sam Crusoe. How you doing, Prada Joel? We're back. Alright, doing a sharp left turn, watch out. Did he crash? Oh. What's with the editing? Um, so we got a little bit we got a little bit close to the guardrail, navigated that turn. Instead of panicking and hitting the guardrail and, and doing some target fixation, he target fixated over here, which is good because that's where he wants to go. Let's get to 200 likes, everybody. Let's do that. Let's try that. Dragon Rider Productions, we're back at it again. Intersection. Watch out. We're going to turn right. They want to turn right. Now we can either accelerate through, apply the brakes, but uh, we accelerated. Handled it. We got a turn coming up, remember? Hands on the handlebars. You guys always talk crap about me doing that. All right, what are we? Same thing, people merging over. Okay. Okay, very good, very good. Uh, but yeah, thanks Motostars for putting these videos together. Appreciate it. Make sure you guys hit that like button. You click that subscribe button. We have our shop in the description. We have everything that we do in the description. Grab yourself a cardo. Grab yourself uh, a booklet. Uh, Smart Rider training drills. But uh, yeah, hope you guys uh, learned something from this. And uh, we'll be talking to you guys later. So that was uh, the second recording. That'll go out Sunday. That'll go out Sunday. But we do have some more. Not more crashes and whatnot. But we do have... Uh, we do have a lesson that we're going to go over real quick. So personal protective equipment, guys. Remember, make sure we get our helmets, jackets, pants, gloves, and boots. If you want to go ahead and screenshot this, go right ahead. Uh, this is part of the lesson in the MTC Rider Academy, so make sure you guys sign up and join there. But we have a full, the basic smart rider there. But we're going to go ahead and go over. Um, oh, shoot. Let's go ahead and figure this out. Let's go ahead and do this. We're going to go over this. We're going to talk about, I'm going to show you guys how I'm doing it. Um, let's go ahead and do that. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's do this. And uh, we're going to switch over. And uh, I'll see you guys there. What's up, everybody? We're going to be jumping into Unit 2. Okay, so we're talking about motorcycle-specific gear. Uh, basically, your full set. Helmet, jacket, pants, gloves, and boots. But right here, I mean, there's a lot going on, okay? So we have a lot of gear. It's like, what do we get? How do we get it? Everything. It's like, it's very overwhelming, especially if you get the wrong kind of gear, you're kind of stuck with it. You can't really return things after you wear it, especially on the bike, and it's it's in the terms of service, that, even at RevZilla. But uh, basically, what we're looking at when it comes to gear is impact protection, abrasion resistance, uh, weather mitigation, and uh, body temperature thermal regulation, basically, because it's, it's really important. So when it comes to abrasion resistance, we don't want to get road rash, okay? There's lots of different levels of road rash, basically from barely the top of your skin, like a little rug burn, to your removing flesh, like muscle tissue. It's not, it's not fun. So what we need when it comes to gear is good abrasion resistance. And they typically have the abrasion resistance on the jackets on the outside, because when you start tumbling, that's where it is. Same thing with impacts, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, on the pants, you're going to have it on the buttocks. Uh, you're going to have it on the knees, on the sides of the hips. Gloves, you're going to have it definitely on the knuckles, but you know, you're going to have reinforced stitching on the, uh, hopefully, on the palms. Boots, pretty self-explanatory to protect your feet, protect your ankles. Uh, make sure it's nice and solid so that you're not banging around and, and actually ripping your ankle off while it's still in the boot. Can happen. I've heard it, heard about it. And then helmets, pretty self-explanatory there too because you know you don't want to get a cracked skull. Okay, so that's the impact part, but you can still it still protects for abrasions. You don't want to rip your, your scalp off or, or remove your face. I know we're getting pretty dark here, but that's kind of what happens. So impact protection, though, on jackets. Jackets, though, impact protection for a jacket where it should be is in your elbows and then your shoulders. And then sometimes they do include back protection. 
right here, this is a D30 armor back protector. But most of the time, you'll see a gray piece of foam in there. That's not, that's just padding. Okay, you want to get an actual back protector. Okay, and that, that's how they kind of cheap you out a little bit. They're, hey, it's a cheap jacket, but the back protector is like 80 bucks. Okay, so just kind of anticipate that. So, impact protection for there, uh, impact protection for pants is going to be in the knees. Typically, that's pretty standard. Uh, they do offer in the hips, so if you can find some with hip armor, even better, because you don't want to break your pelvis, okay? Your iliac crest right here, you don't want to do that. A lot of blood vessels, your femoral artery goes through there. Break, 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 no, 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 you don't want that. So, uh, knee armor, hip armor, and then you got some abrasion resistance on the buttocks. Okay, when it comes to gloves, same thing. You're going to have in the front, on the knuckles hopefully, and then maybe a little bit on the palm. Not too much when it comes to these, we'll talk more about short cuff and long cuff gloves when it comes to that. Helmet, impact protection, obvious, obvious. Okay, so now when it comes to weather mitigation, it's kind of just gonna be a quick little overview of it. So if you ride in the rain, get some rain gear. If you ride in the snow, get some, get some gear that are, it's designed for snow, which is gonna typically be heated gear. Okay, so you're gonna wanna get some gear that's gonna provide external heat, because if you can't produce your own body heat, it's not gonna keep it in. So you wanna have some, maybe some external gear. But if you're good with layering up, that's fine, because with layers, you can actually start taking layers off when it starts warming up during the day. That's what I typically do with gear uh, here in, in Tucson, uh, in Arizona. Uh, this is all summer gear, but when it gets to winter riding, I just put like uh, Under Armour cold gear. I know, you know motorcycle brands have their own version of base layers, but you know, start layering up. Get a base layer, get a t-shirt, maybe a long sleeve underneath it, then you have your jacket, and then it gets, you know, it could, it could help you out there. Pretty good. Um, so yeah, cold gear, same thing, but yeah, uh, summer gear, you don't want to be wearing all that winter gear during the summer. And so I have, like I said, perforated gear here. This is also a summer jacket. This is Cool Fly, uh, Fly Cool Pro 2, so it's designed for this. And then this is the Reacts Alta Mesh. Mesh is in the name, so it's actually pretty uh, airy. It flows pretty well. And the goal there is to make it to where I don't overheat. So weather mitigation, we it helps out when it comes to your body temperature. So. That's what we're also trying to work for is that we either get gear that's specific to, you know, wet riding. We don't want to have uh, to be soaking wet. And then when we're riding 45 miles an hour to have that evaporative cooling, removing our body heat. So if we're able to get uh, rain gear, that's going to not pull our heat away because it's just sliding off us because it's Gore-Tex or whatever it is. And we're able to keep that body temperature in, we should be doing fine. If we get too hot, we're going to get woozy, drowsy, uh, we're dehydrated. Uh, we're going to make bad choices. You ever seen anybody dehydrated? They pretty much look like they have a fever and you're riding a motorcycle. So we don't want to be super cold. We don't want to be super hot. We want to have that right temperature. And what's going to help you out with that is the right gear. And so we're going to jump into that kind of stuff. We're going to talk about helmets next. We're going to talk about jacket pants, talk about gloves and boots. Yeah, I hope you guys are doing it. The beard looks ah in between. I, I got some stuff. Anyways, um, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying that. Nice little, uh, nice little lesson in between things. Nice little lesson. But uh, yeah, we're talking about four ways PPE can save your life on a motorcycle. It's very important, guys. It's very important. Very, very important. Get back to. Let's back to that so you guys can see that. Got three months of video to go through. Longest stream ever coming. <laughs> yeah, we just took a three month break, but we're gonna uh, we're gonna slowly go, and so we have eight weeks worth of actual videos to make up for. So and plus a lot more. MotoStars has been doing some doing some stuff. How you doing, Fortunate Runt? Yep. We're back. We're back. One year and three months now, motorcycle rider. Sweet. Sweet. That's nice. How many miles do you got? How many miles have you put on in that time? How many miles? <laughs> but yeah, when it comes to gear, I mean, like, abrasion resistance, making sure you have the proper materials, you know, good Kevlar, good airman fibers, some high-quality leather. It'll help out with... Uh, that abrasion okay you don't want to have you know level one two or three road rash you don't want to have any road rash at all so making sure that you have actual gear that does that that's why it's important to have motorcycle specific gear because like regular you know jackets aren't designed 
for abrasion. They're designed for whatever it is they're designed for, looking good. They're designed for, uh, you know, heat and cold, all that stuff. Impact protection, they don't have that. So that's why motorcycle-specific gear is really good because they have impact protection on the elbows and the shoulders, knees, and hips, and uh, wherever else, you know, obviously in the helmets for the head and gloves for the hands and boots for the feet. But that's why you have that because normal regular gloves like even like these Under Armour gloves that I have because it was cold this morning, they're just they're not designed for uh, impacts or abrasions. So it's really important to get that. And weather mitigation and, and temperature regulation, that's what these are for, but they don't, like I said, not for motorcycle-specific stuff. So there's motorcycle gear that is designed for uh, hot weather, so ventilation, and then cold weather where it's obviously not a lot of ventilation, but um, it's designed to keep that heat in. So, you outpaced me, Waldo. Going to catch up soon? What happened? 15,000 kilometers in 15 months? 17K miles? Ooh-wee! It's about right. It's about right. You usually put the most amount of miles on your bike right at the beginning. Right at the beginning. But, guys, um, I'm going to be spending some time. Uh, we're going to be uploading those videos uh, Saturday and Sunday, the after-action reviews, so everyone else can see them because they didn't make it to class today. So um, make sure you guys click that like button, click that subscribe button. We're going to be getting out of here. And uh, yeah, I got some stuff I got to do today. I'm going to put make some uh, deliveries and whatnot and grab myself a donut that you guys didn't put your tongues all over. Anyways, with that said, I hope you guys ride safe, be safe, and uh, I'll see you guys later.